Hello YouTube, I'm Tom and Brad and today we're having a look at defending your defense. We'll have a quick look at the two main types of turret that we use for defense and space engineers, at least the vanilla versions. But I want to focus more on actually protecting your defense system. So I'm going to show you how to set up a basic defense for your defense and demonstrate the effectiveness of that with various types of weapons. Can we protect our Gatling turret from a rocket barrage? Hmm, well let's find out. Please give the video a thumbs up if you enjoy it or find it useful and subscribe to easily find more of these tutorials. Subscribers are very welcome to request tutorials they'd like to see me do. Just get into the comment section and ask away. In terms of base defense, turrets are a great option. Let's just have a quick look at some of the settings. Obviously we want to make sure our block's turned on. The things that we can change that are useful, it defaults to a 600 meter aiming radius. You can put that up to 800. You can turn off the idle movement so it doesn't do that little random rotating thing every now and then and that might save some frames for you if you're on a low end system. You can also do things like target meteors on and off. If you don't have meteors in your game, you just turn that off. It's useful to target missiles if you've got enemy ships coming at you that are using missiles. And then you can choose whether you want to take on large or small ships and things like stations. Now that's more useful if your turret is attached to a ship that you're flying. Now if there are neutral NPCs in the game and you don't want it to start a war with them accidentally, then you can turn that off there as well. And then I suggest leaving the conveyor system on so it pulls in ammo as it needs it, if you've got some in your inventory, of course. The ammo the Gatling turret uses is the 25184 NATO ammo container, so that's the large crate looking one. Gatling turrets have a large port on the bottom to connect to a conveyor system so you can feed ammo from your storage containers directly to the turret without having to manually walk up to the turret and load it. However, you can load it manually if you wish by accessing the panel on the side here. Missile turrets have almost exactly the same set of options. Let's have a quick look at those. You can see you have an aiming radius you can change. Again, you can turn off the idle movement and targeting meteors and what have you. The ammo the missile turrets use is the 200mm missile container. Missile turrets are the most devastating weapon in Space Engineers, at least in the vanilla version, but they are quite expensive to create and the ammo is costly too. They can also be fairly inaccurate. So let's get our toolbar set up. Starting with number 5, we'll go for a conveyor junction. Then we'll have a Gatling turret and a welder. I'm in creative mode as usual for the purposes of the tutorial and I'm going to start by placing down a conveyor junction and on top of that I'll put another conveyor junction and then on top of that we'll put a Gatling turret. Now I don't need to put any ammo in it because we're not actually going to be firing this Gatling. This is purely about how we protect our Gatling guns and defense systems. So let's start by having a quick look at how easy it is to disable one of these turrets. So the first weapon I'm going to use is the automatic rifle, so that's the lowest rifle you get. And I can see there that it's stopped turning, so that might be just enough. I can test to see what sort of condition it's in quite quickly by just switching to a grinder and having a look. And we can see on the bottom right, if you can just see that, the functional line has been passed, so that gun's now disabled. Let me quickly weld it back up and let's try attacking it with just the grinder. So this is an enhanced grinder, so this is the next step up from the default one. Let's see how long it takes. And it's done. So they don't last very long. If an enemy can get to your turrets with a grinder, they'll be gone in seconds. So the way we can prevent that from happening so quickly is by simply adding a welder to the system. Just quickly before we start, I'm going to place down some unwelded blocks around this welder just to show you the area that the welder works within. It's actually a cube in the area that it works in, but this is just so you can see what's going on. And I've placed some steel plates inside of the welder and I'm going to turn it on and we'll see what it does. So that gives you an idea of the area that a welder will cover when it comes to placing them around your turrets. You should also note that the turret itself takes up a space of nine blocks, so that's one block extra 
on each side, so you can't place a welder that comes up the side of the turret. Then we pull up a welder, flip it around the right way, pop it on the side, and the first thing to go, you might have noticed, when these are taking damage, it goes in order from top to bottom, are steel plates. So if we load this up with steel plates, let's go to there, I'm just going to drag whatever I've got, 177, that should do. And then we'll make sure that the welder is turned on, of course, it's off by default, and then just keep away from the hot end while you're experimenting. And let's try again now with the assault rifle. You might have noticed the little black puffs of smoke that appear. Now that's when the welding job is finished. So each one of those black puffs there is saying that that is completely welded back together. And we can have a look at that by going up and seeing, yep, yeah, it's absolutely fine. So while I've got the grinder out, how about we just try grinding it down? No, it's not doing anything. So I can guess what you're thinking. I've used an assault rifle and a grinder to take out this turret and it couldn't do it when the welder was on. But what about a large grid turret on the base? Let's test that out now. I'm going to use remote access to get to my base. And if you'd like to see a tutorial on that, there is one in my playlist. I'll link it on the screen now. So I'm doing shift K. My earth base terminal is the one that I'm after. And then I want the... Gatling, yours might be named differently. Gatling 1, and I'm going to go down to Control. So there we go. So now I'm in control of the large grid turret. And if I zoom in, there's me standing there. And let's just shoot the heck out of this thing. Yeah, so use a full round of ammo, and it hasn't touched it. Yeah, it's absolutely fine. So an automatic rifle or grinder won't touch a Gatling turret if it has a welder that's loaded up with steel plates. And we've also tried it with one of the base Gatling turrets and it couldn't destroy it. Now you might be wondering why I suddenly have four welders and a cargo container full of stuff to make a Gatling turret. And it's because I'm going to shoot it with some rockets. Now very crudely put this rocket launcher on the front of the ship, loaded it up with as many rockets as it'll take. And now I'm going to try and blow this thing up. Will it survive? <laughs> Here we go. There's one, two, three, four, five. I saw a shake. Oh, no, didn't make it. Oh, made a mess of the ground as well. Now, so even with four welders fully stocked with all the materials that it needs, the defense defense is no good against rockets. Rockets are deadly. And for those of you that like building bases inside of hillsides, here's a little system. Assume there's a, a tasty little base inside of here. I've got plenty of power. I've got a cargo container full of steel plates. And at the end here, I have two Gatling turrets, which are protected by this welder right here. The welder will also protect this section of the conveyors. And the welder itself has its own little backup at the side here. So with this in mind, we could set up a system around our base that protects the turret from getting destroyed instantly with just a simple welder. So here's an example of the turret that I've got set up on my base. You would have seen this briefly a while ago in one of the early tutorials, but I didn't really go into much detail about it. So here you can see I've got some heavy armor slopes protecting the welder, and it just tidies things up a little bit. The AI used by NPCs will typically target turrets first, then it will go for your power supply. So it's worth having your turrets a little bit off your base because stray bullets obviously will wreck anything else. So I would rather that this was damaged and destroyed before it accidentally destroyed my base. So having a little bit of distance in between is a good idea. Hopefully this tutorial has been interesting or at least a little bit entertaining and your results may vary, but it's something that's fun to play with and it's a very simple way to get some extra defense for your defense.
Thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to leave a like and get into the comments and ask for a tutorial if there's anything in particular you would like to see. I'll see you soon. Bye bye.